thank you so much for joining us here tonight for our Simple Good Teen Art Showcase, where we are featuring our After School Matters Kenwood students who will be exhibiting their photography on their meaning of the simple good and how they'll use it to change the world. So before we dive in, I just wanted to introduce myself and um, tell you a bit more about the simple good, and then we'll jump right in. So my name is Priya Shah. I'm the founder and executive director of The Simple Good. Um, and for those of you that don't know, our mission is to connect the meaning of good from around the world to empower youth to become positive activists through art and discussion. So um, our students here today have been with us for the past several weeks, really exploring um, the meaning of simple good from within themselves and around the world and in their community through the lens of photography by using mindfulness and social emotional learning within their day to day. And our hope is to really transcend the message that no matter where you go in the world, good means the same to all of us. And that is what connects us as human beings. So um, we have a brief video that we just wanted to share with you guys to give you a little bit more flavor about the world of the simple good and give you a preview about what's to come. You start to think more about others. Well, for me, at least, when I, we went out and we started talking to people, we, I started looking at stuff different, like sunsets and the buildings and the people around me. I started looking at them different. <laughs> idea of this program, Simple Good, has kind of allowed me to see Simple Good in other people as well because I usually focus on myself. So since this is more community-based, we're looking at the positivity in communities and groups of people. The Simple Good has impacted me by like making me realize that the little things are the the good in life. Like I, I can eat breakfast now and be like, this is a simple good, or I can help my mom cook and be like, I'm doing the simple good. So it makes me look at life more positively. I guess it's made me see how a lot of people from all around the world have posted photos about the blog. And it just makes me think like, wow, it's touched all these people and now it's touching me. I think positivity is a thing we need in all of our communities, especially now with everything going on. Um, you know, just little things that people can do every day, saying hi lending a hand here and there, you know, makes a big difference. I feel like the simple good is more about caring, helping others, um, going around different communities, for example, like the elderly, and going to North Londo to see students do graffiti art. My community in recent years has become one of the most negative communities in the city. And I feel like if something positive were to happen, it will be able to keep at least that one team, say one team's life or influence somebody, to, somebody else to do something good. Sorry, I was on mute. Amazing. Um, so that's a little preview of um, the idea of the simple good and how that translates within our students. So I'm super excited to see what our students have in store for us today. Um, so before we begin, we can move to the next slide. You started. Um, I wanted to introduce our guest speaker, Brianna Lexi, who will be, um, who has joined us here today to support our youth and um, critiquing some of their artwork that we'll be presenting here today and providing her thoughts and feedback. So, Brie, did you want to say hi and please say a few words to everybody? Hi, everybody. My name is Brianna. Feel free to call me Brie. Um, like it says, I'm from Chicago, from the South Side, Chatham, and I went to school at King Jones and um, I am currently, you know, working in my field of choice, which is amazing. And I get to see all the different ways that the film industry impacts the world. And so I'm excited to see how you guys photography does the same. Amazing. Thank you. We're so excited to hear what your thoughts are in a little bit. So um, we're going to jump right in before we start. 
Um, I wanted to thank and shout out our After School Matters um, partners that do amazing work and we've been working together for the past several years um, to bring Simple Good to more students. So we're really excited for our ASM students at Kenwood to be a part of our newest cohort. So um, I am going to now introduce um, um, our amazing program coordinator and lead teaching artist, Ms. Ali, who will um, kind of set the tone for us to create a brave space together, as well as introduce our students for their presentations. So Ms. Ali, do you want to take it away? Yeah, thank you, Priya. And hello, everyone. Thank you so, so much um, for spending your afternoon with us to really celebrate these students. Um, these young folks have been hard at work the past 10 plus weeks working on and their understanding, deepening their understanding of what does a simple good mean to them, utilizing different tools of photography to then transform and translate that message for all of y'all today. So I'm just so incredibly proud of them. Um, they have shown up every time, Monday through Wednesday, 5 to 6 p.m. after long days at school to sit right in this virtual space and create a community that I, I really, really appreciate. Um, and I'm just really, really proud of all of y'all. So I hope that you feel the same way when you share out your simple goods tonight. Um, so as Priya mentioned, this is a brave space, right? So just a few general housekeeping rules so we can find this to be the most successful and seamless activity together. So you want to stay on mute and share your feedback and questions in the chat. Brie, of course, will be providing her feedback on, on camera, right? And our students will also be presenting their simple good artist statements. Please be kind and open to the ideas of others as this is a brave space. We're all here to celebrate our young artists and think about your simple good throughout this presentation and be ready to share. There's gonna be some amazing concepts that I know that we're gonna be able to relate to. So please don't hold back in sharing how it is that the simple good of these students has touched your heart tonight. Next slide, please. So without further ado, I would love to invite Malachi to come up and read out his artist statement. I'm quickly just going through to see if he made it with us. He has not, but I can read out his artist statement so we can still feel his message. So let's go ahead and get started. So Malachi writes, hello, my name is Malachi Williams. I'm 16 years old in 11th grade and attend Kenwood Academy High School. My simple good is self-motivation because most people do not have any encouragement from others. So sometimes you have to find it in yourself instead of it being from others. So that way you can be your own gym coach, your own leader. My simple good was inspired by my own lack of motivation for school, exercise, and changing my ways of life in general. I depicted my simple good in my photo by taking a picture of what seems to be the sun, but is actually the moon during a sunset, symbolizing how you can be your own bright sun without being a sun in the first place. I plan on using my meaning of the simple good to improve my community and change the world by encouraging others and helping people realize that they are not alone in their fight. This is important to me because I used to be very suicidal and used to think that there was no one trying to help slash in my corner. But I soon realized that I am not alone and that there are others in my struggle who feel the same pain. And because I know there are others, I feel I should try to help them overcome their guilt and feel more prideful. Thank you. A simple good question I would ask others is, who is in your corner? Yeah, it is an incredible um, photo. Thank you, Brie, and a lot of vulnerability. And I wish so much that Malachi was here, but the good news is, is that we are recording this. So we will be sharing this with him so he can see it. So um, Brie, I'd love to pass the mic to you now. Maybe you could answer that question for Malachi so he can hear your answer. Who is in your corner and how does this simple good make you feel? Well, first off, this picture is, is, is mesmerizing. I feel like um, if I was not told that it was the moon, I wouldn't know. Um, it's very bright. And I think it's a really good indication of you being like a brightness in the dark. You know, it's, it's getting dark early now. And to have a moon shine that bright, I feel is symbolic because a lot of people, they sometimes are the only brightness around them. Sometimes they have to make their own brightness. And that's what the moon does for us on Earth. So... I like the picture a lot. It, for me, I just kind of am staring at it. It looks like the brightness is growing and growing. And that's nice because that means that there's some sort of, um, you know, positive, pos positive outlook on what the possibilities could be because this is getting bigger and bigger. Um, who's in my corner? I would definitely have to say um, my parents are in my corner. Um, 
my friends are in my corner and um honestly my work family is in my corner it, it was that that last one was probably one that I didn't didn't really know I was stepping into a new role especially as you know an African-American woman in the film industry I didn't know what to expect so to have people in your corner that you didn't necessarily not expect to be there but it's just a nice surprise it always just helps you get through life and I think that that's the question you kind of have to ask yourself because some people they are the only person in their corner so I think it's great if you as a person can find someone or ends up having someone find you that you guys can be in each other's corners I think that's great Thank you so much. Thank you so much for sharing all of that, Brie. And Malachi, when you see this, I hope that you know that we're in your corner too. We're rooting for you, Malachi. We really, really are. Thank you so much for sharing this. All right, y'all give it up for Malachi. All right, Carmen, I invite you to read your artist statement, please. Hello. Um, my name is Carmen Hong. I'm 15 years old and I'm in 10th grade and I attend Kenwood Academy. My simple good is the beauty of nature. Without nature, we would not have enough oxygen, not enough food, and not enough supplies and more things. Nature is also beautiful and creates great sceneries for us. My simple good was inspired by a unique looking strawberry. Although it does not look like a how a strawberry usually looks, it still tastes good. I depicted my simple good in my photo by changing the tone of the photo to make it look more warm. I plan on using my uh, meaning of the simple good to improve my community and change the world by showing that not everything you do has to be perfect. You just need to make your best effort and show that you care. This is important to me because without nature, we would uh, have nothing. Nature is organic and not geometric, so you don't need to be geometric either. Thank you. And my simple good question is, what does nature mean to you? Yes, Carmen, thank you, thank you, thank you. I love, Carmen's got bars in her artist statement, y'all talking about not being geometric. All right, take it away, Brie. Um, are we allowed to, to ask questions? Yes, please. Well, first off, um, I think it's a very beautiful picture. Um, I immediately wanted to know if, if there even was a reason what made you want to contrast that bright red with the green behind it? Because obviously we know that green is kind of like the default symbolic color of nature and, and health and growth and stuff. But what made you want to compare that with the red? Because I think it definitely like adds a, a mood, a vibe to the picture for sure. Um, I think I put red to contrast with the green to show that um, you can stand out even though um, it's like nature, you can stand out even though everyone else is there too. Yeah, I would agree. I would agree also when you said that, you know, it doesn't look like a regular strawberry, but it still tastes good. I, I would agree. I feel like, you know, nature doesn't really have a standard for beauty, but the world does. And obviously, you know, there's sometimes frowns if you don't look like a regular strawberry, but that's a lot of people's lives. I think it's a very important message to show that like, just because you don't look how people expect you to look, it doesn't mean that you're not beautiful. It doesn't mean that you're not beautiful on the outside specifically. It's really about perspective. And I think you did a really good job of showing that. Yes, thank you, Brie. Carmen, folks want you to know this picture makes me feel the freshness of nature. Uh, to me, nature means peace, greater belonging. Nature doesn't have a standard for beauty, but the world does. I love that. Y'all, quotables for days. These colors are so beautiful. Nature to me means life and renewal. Nature means peace and simplicity. Nature to me is being pure. I love that photo. This is impressive focus. It is not easy to get that close and have it in focus. Great job, Carmen. Give it up for Carmen, y'all. All right. Next up, we invite Serene. Okay, so, um, hello, my name is Serene. Uh, I am 15 years old in the 10th grade and I attend Kenwood Academy. Um, my simple good is sitting back, relaxing and enjoying the view and scenery. And the reason why I said that is because with COVID-19, uh, we have been trapped inside uh, with online learning and yeah, my simple good, it was inspired by the return back to school during the pandemic. And um, I depicted my simple good uh, by taking a random picture of my surroundings one day 
while I was waiting for my ride. And I just, it was just, it was just a lot to take in. Like when you sit back and actually see what's around you, it's a lot. But um, yeah. Uh, also, uh, yeah, I depicted it by editing the pictures to make the colors pop out more, like uh, the contrast and burn this on all that. Um, this is important me, uh, important to me because with us coming back to uh, school with COVID, I think we should take time to sit back and enjoy what's around us. And then, yeah, thank you. Uh, a simple good question I will ask others is, when do you give yourself time to rest besides sleeping? That's a very good, simple, good question. Um, I'll answer that first and I'll give you my opinions on the picture. For me, I think, um, you know, there's a glitz and glam of the film industry that if you're not in it, it just looks amazing. But it is something that you can get caught up in really quickly. And it's something, especially once I got um, different roles on different shows, I wasn't taking a lot of time to rest. And it was really affecting me and affecting my mental health. And it wasn't until this re recent break that I've had from working that I've been able to get back into doing things that I like, things that make me feel good. And I think sometimes we forget that we have to make time for that too, right? You can't just go through life on autopilot because you'll crash at some point. Doesn't matter what age, doesn't matter what's going on around you. You know, when you don't give yourself time to rest, your body is gonna make you. And I think that's a really good, a good point to be made. Um, is this photo by Lake Park or on Lake Park or something like that by Kenwood? Yeah. Um, yeah. I think as someone who was, was done with school by the time that COVID happened, I couldn't imagine going back and seeing the difference. Because I think sometimes, even in certain situations when we see maybe a concert or something like that, you are like so surprised you're like so surprised to see so many people out on the street because we went an entire year without seeing anyone. And we don't take these things. One second, I need to close it. While Bree's taking care of that, Serene, folks want you to know, I love the contrast between the darkness, blues of the sky and the brightness of the cars and the lights. Uh, time I give myself is to rest is through meditation and through creation process. Yeah, so to sum up what I was saying, um, something like this, I think we probably didn't really think was something that was significant before COVID. But because we know how much loss there was in COVID, I think it's nice to sit back and see how humans interact with each other, what we do on a daily basis, because we didn't get to see that. We didn't get to see that from certain people and a lot of loss was happened during that time. So to just see humans being humans again, I think is, is a good observation. Great job. Thank you so much, Serene. Bob and I want to, you know, I love the lighting in this photo. I love the idea of taking the time to take in what's around you. It takes a lot of practice. Love this image, very bright and a lot to take in for sure. I can see why this made you pause to take this photo. And Trinity is clapping. Give it up for Serene, y'all. Great job. All right, next we invite Precious. Okay. Hello, my name is Precious Duncan and I'm 14 and ninth grade and attend Kenwood Academy. My simple good is, is it's okay to have bad days and you don't always have to be okay. Because in life, there's always going to be times when you aren't feeling your best, you're not always obligated to be all right. My simple good was inspired by a mental health seminar we had in advisory. I depicted my simple good in my photo by changing the picture to black and white and adding the black into the clouds to show that it's okay to have bad moments that sometimes take away from the good ones. I plan on using using my many meaning of simple goods to improve my community and change the way and change the world by telling people in my community that you don't always have to be all right. This is important to me because so many people don't take mental health serious and feel like they have to always be okay. And that's not the case. Thank you. A simple good question I would ask others is what are ways that you can bring more awareness of not being okay? All right. Um, well, first off, I can definitely see how that contrast and change that you did into the picture evokes that emotion. 
um, you know, we looking at it and we, we see clouds and a lot of the time um, we only see like, like the negative, right? So we can see that negative contrast and we see the black and we see the dark and we think, oh, this is like depressing. But I think a way to bring more awareness of not being okay is for it to be seen more. I think we as a society, especially with social media, are afraid to show our bad days, but it doesn't mean that it takes anything away from us. We just don't wanna show that side of us, right? Nature doesn't have that option. You know, when it's snowing, you see it's dark outside. When it's raining and it looks like this without any type of like color change to the picture, we see that things are happening. I think if we as humans could be a little bit more vulnerable and show that side, it would be more accepted. I think normality is usually what leads to something becoming normal in society in general. And so if we could have a different reaction sometimes to pictures like this, I think it could bring more awareness and it can make other people feel safer to come out when their days look like this. You know, everybody has days that look like this, but I still think this is a beautiful picture. There's still a lot of white in this picture. There's still a lot of brightness in this picture, but we're just conditioned usually to see the negative sides of things because of social media. So I think that if we could show that side of us a little bit more, those dark days, those days when we are not the best and support when that happens so that people feel supported once they come out and say these things, I think it'll make it a little bit more normal. And I think in general, the awareness will become more normal as well. So that was a great picture. Wonderful job, thank you. Precious folks want you know, beautiful image. I love looking at the sky. I think we can bring more awareness of not being okay by normalizing vulnerability. Mm -hmm. I love the black and white contrast in this picture. I love the comments on being okay, showing our vulnerability. Wow, again, the use of focus, how it's soft and crisp in different parts is amazing. Thank you for sharing this message, Precious. I definitely believe we're not always allowed to have down days, but even down days are important to acknowledge. Great job. Give it up for Precious, y'all. Great, great job. All right. And next we invite Trinity. Trinity, are you still with us? I know that you just wrote in the chat box. Oh, sorry. Oh, no, you're fine. Go for, it. It. Go for it, Trinity. Okay, I'll start over. Sorry. Um, okay. Hello, my name is Trinity Hoskins. I am 17 years old in 12th grade and attend Kenwood Academy. My simple good is valuing the importance of accepting it's okay to not try to avoid not being happy because in the long run, it will cause you stress and pain you have been avoiding on the inside. My simple good was inspired by me. I remember when there was a time where I struggled not knowing if I was, if it was okay to feel happiness to not feel happiness. And it led to an unhealthy state of confusion, thinking that there was something wrong with me if I was disappointed, complained, or disagreed. And I think it was because I was nervous of what someone's reaction would be if I shared that I wasn't okay. I depicted my simple good in my photo by taking a photo of something that made me happy. Because during this time, I was moving away to a different state. And I was quite sad. But Add on during this time, I was frustrated on the inside and I got emotional because of the sky brought me peace and happiness. And that's what I wanted to feel because it hurt so much to me that I had a hard time trying to convince myself it was okay to, to feel these sad emotions to the point where anything like the beautiful sky made me tear up. I plan on using my meaning of the simple good to improve my community and change the world by spreading awareness of mental health and knowing how important it is to share when you aren't okay because what you have to say is important. This is important to me because I believe focusing on mental health can prevent a lot of issues in the world we live in today, like suicide, anger issues, expression issues, and more. And my question is, what truly brings you happiness? Okay, so I think this is like that same kind of question of or statement of it's okay to not be okay, right? Um, a lot of the times it's, it's very hard for us to not be okay. We're not told and we're not trained in society to not be okay, or at least if you are not okay, 
to not show it, you know? Um, I think that, again, there's nothing wrong with not being okay. Um, I agree with what you said. It's gonna come with some bad implications if you try to ignore something like that. Um, I know for me, you know, I have, you know, my own mental health um, history and it was really hard for me to show that I was not okay. I, I think probably still am considered like the strong friend that everyone can come to and talk to, but it didn't leave me with a lot of margin of being able to feel that comfortability because I'm supposed to be the strong one. You know, I'm supposed to be the one to help everybody. And that's, that's, not, um, that's not good in general for yourself. You, you should help people for sure. You should definitely help people, but you gotta be able to help yourself before you can help anyone else. And that is, that includes acknowledging that you are not okay, right? That includes that it's okay to not be okay. With this picture, um, I'm glad the picture brought you happiness. It brought me happiness. I love how there's literally like every color in the rainbow in this picture. Um, the sky is every color and then that green really like pops. You can still see it. It's still magnified in some way that I can see the green sometimes a little bit brighter than the other colors. Uh, you know, and then you have nature. We love nature. Nature is always beautiful. It always adds another, uh, an, another element to it because you can't really like determine how nature is gonna look. You know, the tree could have blown a different way when you took the picture. It could have looked a little bit different, but it came out the way that you liked it. And I think that's that's really important to photography, having that ability to look at a picture, have an emotion, have a feeling about it, and be able to take a picture that evokes that same emotion that you had when you took it, right, to the audience, because it's all about the message you intended to send, not the one that you received. So when you are able to send it and they receive the same message, I think that's always a great thing. And then what truly brings me happiness, I mean, I think right now, um, being at that point of being uh, vulnerable and being okay with being vulnerable, it's not a tangible thing. I know it's not a material thing, but for me, it's something that I personally struggle with a long time and, and taking like compliments and just being praised and things like that, that that was very hard for me. So being vulnerable now um, brings me true happiness because it shows how much growth I've had since I was, I mean, in high school, completely different person, completely different person than I was two years ago. That brings me happiness to know that that is because I added some of that vulnerability in my life. So, yeah. Amazing. Amazing. Thank you so much. Look at, look at all that y'all are inspiring, right? This is beautiful. Uh, Shilpa wants, you know, I love this image. The colors of the sky and the stillness of the tree are stunning. What brings me happiness is being around friends and family. Kitty, the colors in this image are beautiful. I love the gradient in the sky that moves from blue to yellow. It's very calming. Um, what a beautiful photo. Sunsets are my favorite. What truly makes me happy is good people around me that help me create enriching experiences in life. And then Trinity, um, this image is beautiful. How were you able to capture the sunset in the background of the photo? Um, so I took this in my backyard at my old house. And I just like, I was on like the deck and I just took a picture of it. And I was like, this is really pretty. So that's how I took it. Amazing. Thank you so much. Give it a fraternity, y'all. All right. And next up, we invite Jakari. Okay, hi, my name is Jakari. Um, hello, my name is Jakari. I'm 14 years old in ninth grade and attend Kenwood Academy. My simple good is simply independence because for so long we have fought for it and I think we should embrace it. Also, I feel that strength is also shown through independence. My simple goal is inspired by our history as African-Americans and personal life in general. I accepted my simple good in my photo by taking a picture of a figure on one of my trophies that reminded me of the Statue of Liberty. The Statue of Liberty represents freedom and democracy of the United States. This ties my simple good because I feel with freedom, we shall all have the spirit to be independent. I plan on using the me my meaning of the simple good to improve my community and change the world by showing everyone that you don't need to, you don't need someone else to do what you need or want to do. Being independent in this era is very important because you can't always rely on others. This is important to me because as I grew older, I realized there are some responsibilities only I can take care of without the help from others all of the time or worrying about 
what the next person is going to do to get my things done. Please. Plus, sometimes it's better to do things yourself to get it done. <laughs> you want it done. Thank you. Some good question I will ask others is, what good do you find in your simple good and how? Well, first off, I love that little glimpse of like light that's reflecting off of it um I think it's usually kind of hard to get that without it overexposing the entire picture and not being able to see just like when you take pictures in the mirror with the camera with the light like it it'll destroy the whole thing so I think it's it's really cool that you were able to do that what's the trophy of is it anything like specific to you or important to you um, well, it's like a figure on one of my trophies. I, um, it was the first trophy I won, I think, at my new school, and it was for a poetry contest, and I won third place, I think. Mm, that's beautiful, because poetry really is like an independent sport, isn't it, right? Like, poetry is like, it's personal. It's personal, and it's vulnerable, because you're usually sharing something really personal. So I think that's really lovely that you... Um, felt uh, safe and confident enough and vulnerable enough to go into, you know, a poetry competition and you were able to come out of it with something that's beautiful. Um, I love that you said you feel like this is a representation of the Statue of Liberty because I feel like um, depending on like, you know, what your experience is, you kind of get a different, people have different interpretations of it, but usually you don't see people talk about other things representing that. It's usually just like the representation of the Statue of Liberty. And I think honestly, uh, for modern day, I think this really does um, reflect what independence looks like right now. I also like that you put um, the colors behind her with the blue, red, and white. I love that you can just see just the shadow of a star above it. I mean, I think the composition and how it was all set up it was really, really great. It looks really nice. I mean, I can tell you played around with the focus, which I think is kind of hard because this is not really like a, a solid figure. There's a lot of textures going on with it. So the fact that you were able to keep the whole thing in focus is pretty great. Yeah, I think it's, I think it's a great picture. Mm-hmm. Yes, great job, Jakari. Folks, let you know, thank you for sharing your message of independence with us through this image. Looking forward to one day hearing your poetry too. Uh, good thing, good that I find in my simple good is the emotion it evokes. This is a powerful message. Jakari, where was this image taken? Um, the image was taken, taken in my house. It was like, we have a shelf with like all of my trophies from school and stuff and um, um, I just was looking on there and I was like, oh, this could be a good representation. So I just took that. Amazing. Great Amazing. job. Thank you so much. Give it up for Jakari, y'all. Mm -hmm. All right. And moving right along, Mia. When you're ready, Nia, we can't wait to hear your artist statement. Are you, Nia, I'm sorry, I have to change my mic settings. Okay. While Nia works through her, her tech, why don't we for a time sake uh, move forward and then we can come back to you, Nia, while you, while you situate that if that's, if that's cool with you, okay? Pretty, we invite you to share your artist statement. Hello, my name is Pretty. I'm 14 years old in ninth grade and attend Kenwood Academy High School. My simple good is confidence because it's something I don't really have. My simple good was inspired by my sister because she's really good at making friends while being herself. I de depicted my simple good in my photo by letting my sister pose and do whatever she wanted for a picture. I plan on using my meaning of the simple good to improve my community and change the world by letting everyone know that that confidence is key and they should embrace who they are as a person. This is important to me because one thing I hate are lies. So I'd want someone to be confident and act like your true self when they're around you. Don't put up a face when around people, it will make you happy. Embrace yourself before trying to make people happy. 
Sometimes it's okay to act like a child and be oblivious to worldly things. Be happy, do what you want, be what you want. Thank you. A simple good question I would ask others is, are you happy with the way you act around people? Are you truly your true self? Okay, so um, first for the simple good question. I mean, I definitely, at this point in life, I don't know how to be anything but myself. <laughs> it's sometimes, it's a blessing and a curse sometimes, honestly. Um, but it did take me uh, a while to kind of like curate the self that, not necessarily that I wanted to present, but the self that I wanted to be. I think um, it's interesting that you said that sometimes we just need to let go and be kids because kids are usually the most confident, you know? Like they're usually the ones that say the wildest things, they don't have a filter, but it's because like society hasn't hit them yet. They don't have those pressures to look a certain way, act a certain way. And I can see it in your little sister, you know, she's just living her best life, she's very happy, but we usually see that in kids, right? It's always a refresher to see that, to see them so happy and smiling and stuff, because I feel like sometimes those smiles kind of go away. The older you get, the more you start to understand life when you become adult and you have to be in scenarios that you didn't ever have to worry about as a kid. I do think it is, um, it's beneficial sometimes for us who are, are not kids anymore to kind of go back to that jovial time in our life because a lot of the times, you know, that's the happiest that people were when they're kids because you were just you're just out here living your best life, not thinking about bills or anything. So sometimes it's hard to bring that back when you're an adult, but I think it's really important to find that. Um, you know, I do, I know you said that it's something that you're not usually uh, confident, that's why you chose it. But I wanna tell you that um, it's gonna come, you know, I think that especially in high school, it's a really tricky. And, um, you know, I, like I said, I went to King and I went to Jones. There were two different experiences, but I definitely can say that the confidence really varied. It really varied on environments. It varied on what was popular, var varied on what was going on in the world, you know? Um, those are things that unfortunately really affect us as teenagers. And I think that it's something that kind of steals our confidence away. And I want to tell you in, in a way as much as you can to not really, not pay attention as much as, or don't put as much uh, weight on the things that you see or the things that people say, because I think sometimes that can discourage us from being our true self, you know? Like we might like a certain thing or like a certain band, like, you know, Jessica knows this. I was a huge One Direction fan, not, not at all embarrassed to say it but me even that it was like that's not a normal normal thing right like that wasn't a thing that was big and popular it wasn't hip-hop it wasn't rap but it was something I still liked I listened to those other things but that was something that people would use against me or make fun of me for but it was something that I personally just liked I mean I grew out of it but it was something that was it mattered to me at the moment you know so Although you might not feel like you're confident, I know that confidence is there and it's in you and it's in a lot of people. It's just a matter of, you know, figuring out how to how to get it there. Also, I love that you have the, you know, confidence be you at the top because I think that's a, a constant reminder we kind of have to tell ourselves. I think a lot of people, uh, they want other people to tell you or you rely on other people to tell you certain things. But I think sometimes we also have to be that cheerleader for ourselves in the mirror. You know, it's great to hear our parents and hear our friends tell us certain things of, oh, you're so funny, you're so beautiful, et cetera, et cetera. But you have to live with you at the end of the day. You have to be able to tell yourself those things as well. So I like that you have this because this is definitely a picture that I could see someone taking in a mirror. And so for her, I'm sure as a kid to be able to look back at it, she'll be able to see those words and put it to herself. And I think, you know, that, that that's what I got from the photo. That's why I really like it. Amazing. Yeah. Shout out to pretty sister who was her model throughout these few weeks together. We got to see her beautiful skills too. And so she was just as much a part of the community and a really great job, pretty. Uh, folks want you to know the edits you made in the photo are great. I love the text elements that you added to the top left corner and how you repeated the same message four times. It's like you created an affirmation for your viewers to read and to feel. I love the confidence view affirmations at the top. This is a great picture. Confidence is so important and not always easy to feel, but you recognizing that you can determine how you feel about yourself is so important. Confidence is an ongoing journey and agree it's important for us to always find it. It takes vulnerability 
ability to be your true self, but it allows you to learn about yourself and the world you want to create for yourself. Great job. All right, Mia, can we come back to you? Is your mic ready? Oh, also oh, give yeah. it a pretty. All right, perfect. If we can go back one slide for Nia, please. All right, take it away, Nia. Um, so, hi, my name is Nia, Nia McGee. I am 14 years old in ninth grade and attend Kenwood Academy High School. My simple good is finding peace in the nature that surrounds us because it is important that we find joy in something, no matter if it's something huge or small, because if we find happiness, we are at peace. My simple good was inspired by nature. I find peacefulness in sunsets and sunrises and taking pictures of them and being able to reconnect with nature is something I find myself doing a lot. I depicted my simple good in my photo by taking pictures of the sunset that gave me peacefulness and calmness in that moment. I plan on using my meaning of the simple good to improve my community and change the world by inspiring other people to find peace in nature in some way. This is important to me because finding peace and calmness in things that constantly surround me so that no matter what, I can always find peace and come back to myself when I'm stressed. Thank you. A simple good question I would ask others is, what feelings do your simple good give you? Well, first off, um, what, what edits did you do to the picture? Um, I just like sharpened it and I forgot like what's the exact uh, setting that I used to like darken it, but that's something that I also did. Okay, yeah, it's crazy because like when I first looked at it, I was like, wow, like you don't really see pictures like this anymore, right? Like it, it kind of has like an aged look to it, like almost like it would have been taken in like the 90s. And I don't know if that was like your intention, but it's a good skill to remember that you have because it does look like it was taken not in 2021, 2022, whenever you took it. So I would keep that whatever you edited because um, that can help you change like photos and things that you like in the future. So that's a, a good editing technique that those, those two that you put together, it looks really nice. Um, I love how it's, it's dark, but it's different shades of yellow. It's still different gradients. I like that the uh, landscape is a little out of focus in the back um, and that you can still tell there are like houses and trees and everything. Uh, where was this picture taken? Um, it was taken on a hiking trail in Arizona. Yes, yes, Arizona. This makes sense because it looks hot wherever it is. And so you can see it in the picture for sure. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I love what you do with the picture. I completely get the two things that you were saying with peace because it is a peaceful picture, right? Like it's a lot going on as far as like the different gradients, but it, it blends well. It blends really, really well. Um, for me, what feelings do you, do your simple good give you? Um, I, I would say peace. I would say peace. If you don't have peace, you don't have anything. And so I can say that the simple goods that I do have and think about those things bring me peace and that's kind of the goal of what I like my simple goods to to bring me because sometimes there are um there are memories that might be a simple good to you or there might be a thing in your house that might be a simple good to you and having those little like random things are good for when you're not feeling peaceful and when you're not feeling good to be able to refer to those things and it gives you a positive feeling from it I think Think is the point right for me to to feel not just good but at peace at peace and then I can refer to that back when I'm not feeling at peace so yeah love the picture and I love the question great job Nia folks want you to know it's very aesthetically pleasing I love the different shades of yellows and oranges in this photo it reminds me of spending time with my friends during the summer I love this picture it feels so warm and peaceful give it up for Nia y'all all right, so we can move on ahead and Logan, uh, move ahead, sorry, y'all. Yeah, Logan, whenever you're ready. Logan, I, I see that you are in the room. Oh, there you go. Sorry. 
It's okay. Um, my simple good is trust the process because if you don't stay calm and be patient and trust the process, things can go in the wrong direction. My simple good was inspired by the picture uh, because it, oh, my simple good was inspired uh, by the picture because it was what made me think of the idea. I took the picture and then that's what, me, what made me come to my simple good. Uh, in my photo, I showed the simple good by showing uh, a small leaf around, uh, like a baby leaf around bigger leaves that are already grown, and then a dead leaf uh, around it too. I plan on using the meaning of the simple good to improve my community and change the world by helping people understand that rushing into things or just quitting things is not the way to go. You have to be patient. This is important to me because I have quit things in the past that I could have been great at because I was not patient. Thank you. And this was a simple good question I would ask others is how do you stay patient when things don't look too well? Um, I would say this, this picture really coincides with your simple good very, very accurately. If you, I mean, just from the picture alone, if you never tried to grow a plant, that's, you have to trust the process with that, right? Because it doesn't grow in front of you, just like water doesn't boil in front of you. You have to take time. And sometimes those plant leaves do die and you're afraid that you've killed your plant, but it really is about trusting the process. I think a lot of people don't trust the process a lot. So um, I think that that dual meaning is, is really important um, because with, I know I keep uh, referring to society, but society is how you know we think it, it impacts a lot. We want like instant, everything all the time and then when things are not instant like you said sometimes we quit things prematurely or we we don't wait to see how things work out i think it's something that we we have to you know be patient because not everything sometimes you're not going to know what the end result of something is and the only way for you to know is to to be patient and watch it and so we really have to start trusting the process more and trusting ourselves more i think sometimes we don't trust ourselves in certain processes. And we think that, oh, this is not gonna go well, or et cetera, et cetera. But we really do have to kind of sit and gain that patience. Um, I love that black contrast of the pot from the green. I'm, I mean, I love that because you were talking about how you have that like one dead leaf, right? And sometimes all you can see is the black around you. Sometimes your tunnel vision, you can't see anything. I think the green, is like the light at the end of the tunnel. Much like how when you see your plant growing and you see that green butt out of the soil, you're like, okay, things are happening. This is a great time. I love that. I love seeing that. And I love that you were able to convey that um, in your picture. As far as your simple good, how do you stay patient when things don't look too well? Um, I, I definitely feel like it's something that you learn with time. Uh, and honestly, it's something that you have to go through a lot of situations where it doesn't go well, but you'll start figuring out what works for you. You'll start figuring out like, okay, maybe if I'm getting a little anxious, I should incorporate this when I'm feeling anxious or refer to the people that you trust. Ask them how you feel about something. Ask them like, hey, is every, do you feel like everything's going all right? Just to, just so you won't be stuck in your head. A lot of anxiety and like rushing is, is you in your head usually. So uh, building that patience and being able to have some type of process for yourself that you can trust, I think is important as well. Love the picture, love the question. Thank you. Great job. Give it up for Logan, y'all. Uh, folks, right, I say patient when I feel uncertain, but I remember the outcome will come out the way it should. I resonate with this since I have to remember this when I grow my plants at home. Good things come with patience. Great job. All right, next we invite Julia. Hello, my name is Julia Ross and I am 14 years old in, in ninth grade in the St. Kilwood Academy. My simple good is moving on because one day as I was driving past my old elementary school, I was reminded of how our year just abruptly ended and I had so many memories from the five years I was there. My simple good was inspired by by dropping a friend off and dropping past my old school that inspired me to tell about my journey moving on. I depicted my simple good in my photo by adding a black and white filter to bring 
bring out to bring out more of the moving presence I wanted to have. I plan on using my meaning of the simple good to improve my community and change the world by letting people know that it's okay to move on and embark on new journeys, good or bad, because it brings an experience. An experience. This is important to me because many people struggle with starting new things, and I would like to let you know it is okay to move on. Thank you. A simple good question I would ask others is, are you okay with it on? Okay, so I definitely see the movement in your picture. Even though it's black and white, it's giving me a lot of feelings, you know, it's giving me nostalgia a lot of the times. Um, you know, I can definitely relate to, to seeing something that you used to drive, you know, driving past old schools and stuff like that, even uh, driving past like uh, my elementary schools and my nurseries and stuff and seeing those like shut down. Um, and those are places that I would volunteer at uh, it forced me to move on, right? Because I couldn't go there anymore. I couldn't see those people. So I had to find um, different ways to still bring that happiness. I think it's hard to move on. I think it's hard to move on, especially if you have uh, positive feelings about whatever happened or positive memories. And then also moving on is scary. Sometimes you're in horrible situations, but a lot of people are scared of what's new. Is it going to be worse? Is it worth taking that leap? You know, I think that unfortunately time moves with us and without us doesn't really matter how we feel about it. And so it's something that we end up having to adopt ourselves on how to do that. Um, I, is there a cross in the background of the picture on top of the, uh, on top of the school? I'm not sure if I'm just like seeing that, could be like a, a cable cord somewhere, but is that like a cross or what was that in the background? No, yeah, the school used to be like an old church. Mm, okay, yeah. Because it's, it's standing out in that white, right? Like that's the whitest part of the image and you can still see that really clearly. I think it was nice that you were able to add contrast to it and not lose that because it looks like it's probably the same color or was the same like contrast saturation as the cloud. And so if you have probably went just a little bit lighter would have lost it, right? But it's there, it's very prominent. At least for me, I still see it. And it's still, uh, it's reflective of the church and it's reflective of the um, the cross right next to it, this, this perpendicular and like diagonal to it, you can still see it. So um, I think that's, that's great because light is very tricky when it comes to editing pictures. And sometimes you can lose important details. And I think that's an important detail and, and it's important detail of still showing, you know, being able to move on. Don't know what's gonna happen. Sometimes it's scary, but um, time time moves. And time heals, and even if you're scared to move on to something, or you know it was a fun time, you can still look at those things. But I mean, transitioning from elementary school to high school—that's a move on thing right there. So, yeah. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Delia. Jessica writes, "I love the editing in this photo. It definitely brings out the feeling of nostalgia. Great job. Give it up for Delia, y'all." Mm -hmm. All right. And next, I know Amia is not with us on the call. Um, but for time's sake, I can just read what is on the screen here for her and perhaps we can throw in our answer to her question into the chat. Amia wrote, a simple good is my identity as a black person because being black is part of my everyday identity. A simple good question I would ask others is, what is the most important thing that you consider a part of your identity? So go ahead and throw your answer to Amia's question in the chat. What is the most important thing that you consider a part of your identity? And Brie, perhaps you could answer that question uh, for Amia. Um, I'd probably have to agree with her. I feel like uh, being African-American and then also being African-American women, uh, when you see people, you usually have prejudgments immediately. And it's usually the first thing that you have to to battle are those pre uh, those pre thoughts that people have about you. A lot of times you have biases that are already stacked up against you from someone that you don't even know and don't even know are there. And so it's one of those identity parts and, and uh, yeah, it's one of those like parts where you have to kind of navigate because it's one of those things that you don't say out loud. People see what you look like and so it's like, for me, the number one barrier, if it is a barrier that I've had to uh, deal with and it's already become a part of my identity. Plus I'm just also very proud to be a black woman. And so um, I myself have turned that around to something positive myself because I mean, I'm not gonna change looking like from this. So it is what it is. 
And it's something I embrace, especially in this day and culture, history of America, all that. Like, it's something I choose to make my everyday identity. Thank you so much for sharing, Bree. And Amia, when you get to watch this, other folks are saying probably being surrounded by mostly older people family-wise, the most important thing that I consider as part of my identity are my values, compassion, justice, self-expression. Great question. My most important part of my identity is my creativity, my hair, my gender, and ethnicity, my faith. Great job. Thank you. And next, uh, we have Ajane's photo up. Unfortunately, we do not have her artist statement, but perhaps we can just take a minute and throw in the chat. What are the simple goods that are you? I'm sorry. What are the simple goods that come up for you looking at Ajane's photo? And Bree, if you'd also like to answer that question, what simple goods do you see in Ajane's photo? Well, I see a very like beautiful light you know, in the middle of crowds, in the middle of people. And I see kind of like a, like a community happiness. You know, Christmas is one of those things where um, it's either your most favorite time of the year or it's the worst time of the year. And in this picture, you see the positive part of it. You see people coming together around this one centralized item um, and taking pictures and, and really enjoying the sights. I think it also just evokes a lot of emotion. I love Christmas. I know a lot of people do love Christmas. And a lot of the times there are memories associated with that. So when you see like a giant Christmas tree, um, you kind of gravitate to it if it's a positive memory for you. And you see there's so many people gravitating to it. So I think they all kind of share that simple good of, of what that tree means to them as well. Beautiful observation. Thank you so much for sharing that. Uh, Jessica writes, Christmas and holiday joy. Uh, Priya says lights, Pretty says community, Kitty said community as well. Thank you so much, Ajane. All right, and next I'd like to invite David. Go ahead, David. Hello? Yes. All right, sorry. Uh, hi, uh, my name is David. I am 15 years old in Kenwood. I'm in the 10th grade. My simple good is enjoying life and cherishing your best moments because it will all go away in minutes. My simple good was inspired by the world around me and the people around me. Uh, I devoted my simple good in photo by leading a person's attention to the world and joy. And I plan to use my meaning of the simple good to improve my community and change the world by spreading uh, positivity and giving it my all. This is important to me because uh, I, I, I like kindness towards others because it really fills me up. And thank you. A simple good question I would like to ask others is, are you cherishing your moments with your loved ones? Um, so, I love the picture. There's a lot of really nice, aesthetically pleasing things happening in the picture. Um, what did you use to kind of create, or what were you shooting through to be able to create this like barrier on the side, this black and white barrier? Uh, black and white. Yeah, like the, the top right hand corner, it looks like you're kind of like shooting oh. the picture through something. Yeah, a ring light. Ring light, yeah. I like that. I, I like, because it kind of makes the picture look like there's two things, right? Like you put two different pictures together and you're kind of inserting it. It's nice that you were able to create that and establish that um, without having to do any of that type of editing. And it, I think it just brings us a lot of joy, right? So that type of sign, you usually see it, it's associated with something fun or like carnivals or food or something like that. And it evokes happiness. Um, and I think you can really see that in this picture and it has great color contrast as well. Even the little tiny blue on the corner, you know, the primary color is really hidden in this picture. Um, and then are you cherishing the moment, your moment with your loved ones? I mean, I think in short for that, I think if anything, COVID has taught us that you have to. I think it's taught us that um, life is short, life is uh, fragile and you have to enjoy those moments in time with your loved ones because you don't know uh, when you're not gonna be able to cherish those moments. I definitely am cherishing those moments. I'm enjoying those moments um, and enjoying being able to 
still be able to like communicate with people, talk to people, uh, because that's really all you had left in COVID was to be able to call and talk to people. That was the way you had to cherish those moments. So being able to still do that and see some of those people in person is really great. Yes, thank you so much. David Folks wants you to know, love the thoughtfulness behind this photo and simple good. Great job. Give it up for David, y'all. And then last, but certainly certainly not least, we have Matthew. Matthew is with us, but is having some technical difficulties. So has asked me to read out his statement. Matthew writes, my simple good is one of my most precious things. It is my first pet L. She brings me joy and I hope she will bring you joy like she does me. Take it away, Bree. Uh, she does bring me joy. Uh, I'm literally in a room and my first pet is sitting outside of the door waiting for me to open the door. Um, usually pets give us that, right? Cause they give us unconditional love um, and they give us an unconditional love that's forgiving, right? We don't really get that as much as you do with, with human beings, but even the most down cats and dogs that you see or that you get off the street or that you get at shelters, they still have that capability of just loving you as you. Dogs and cats and other animals, they don't really like understand the aesthetics of looks and you know how many Instagram likes you have and how much money you make. They just love you for you, kind of like how kids do. You know, They just love you for what you're doing for them and loving on them. And I can tell, I mean, you're very close to your cat, which means that they like you because they let you get that close and take pictures. It seems like, you know, um, maybe the cat is sitting on you and is really just enjoying themselves. I mean, yeah, I think as, as a pet owner, I see this, you know, I, I see it. And usually I, I can feel that love that the, the owner has for their cat or their dog or whatever their pet is. And it's usually one that, um, a lot of people sometimes never get to experience, um, but I'm I'm really happy that you were able to. Also, uh, your cat just really has a nice little white line thing going up here. I think it's really nice in the picture. It kind of cuts the the picture like right diagonally down the the center of it. Um, it adds a nice contrast. It, it does it, and then the fur and the bottom and the fur at the top are two different colors. So you're getting a lot of nice segments that you can see in this picture. So yeah, really love the picture and uh, your, your cat is adorable. Yes, just once, you know, she is so adorable. It's definitely bringing me joy. Great job, Matthew. Um, and all right, y'all, that concludes all of our amazing student work. So without further ado, I'd like to pass the mic back to Priya. Hey guys, thank you so much for showing us your amazing simple goods today the artwork and the thoughtfulness behind all of your artist statements were truly inspiring and incredible and definitely has left a legacy with all of us here today and so we all know it takes a lot of a courage and steps to get here and we're super proud to announce that because of your successful completion we are really excited to have you guys as official simple good Youth Ambassadors for the Simple Good Organization. So welcome to the family. You guys are been officially equipped on understanding and spreading positivity through the program. And so therefore you are now accountable and responsible to spread the simple good around the world. So basically it does not end here. We're expecting to see you help us spread goodness all around the world through your art and then some, and we're gonna to continue to talk about what that will look like, but be proud of what you brought us here today and know about the impact that you left all of us through your beautiful words. So let's give them all a round of applause and shouts for what they have brought us here today and the courage it takes to do this. Thank you guys. Awesome. So we want to make sure that you guys stay up to date with all of us. Um, we did just launch a new retail shop in the South Loop called our TSG pop-up shop. And we would love for you guys to come stop by, add to the space and be a part of it. Um, so we are at 2240 South Michigan um, and we're open Wednesday through Saturday. And that's where you can actually check out our dope TSG merchandise that's all inspired by our students. So if we go to the next slide, you can get a little preview of what that actually looks like. All of our um, 
Merch is inspired by the meaning of the simple good by our students. So every year we pick five student stories whose uh, words we throw on a t-shirt through a public vote. So all of your simple goods will be entered into that and um, we'll be releasing a new set later this year. But until then, we'd love for you to guys to come out and support and check out what uh, stories we've been featuring so far. And all the proceeds help support programs like these and allow us to have more showcases for the future. So I hope you guys will stop by, do your holiday shopping with us and just hang out till the rest of the year is over. Thank you guys for being here. Finally, please keep in touch with us. You know how to get in touch. Um, and we want to stay up to date with what you guys are up to. So um, we're looking forward to seeing what simple goods you guys continue to create from here. Thank you all for being here. Thank you, Brie, for joining us. And we'll see you guys very soon. <laughs>